Hi, and welcome back. After a marathon effort to prepare this data in our spreadsheet for processing and for analysis, we're finally ready to actually get some information out of this thing. Let's start by introducing an additional column. I'm going to introduce the column just here and we'll call this column server time. If you've seen the earlier video you'll you'll be familiar with this. We need to sort the data uh, in a particular way. Let's just check we've got this sorted correctly. So by client IP, by client TCP and then by the SMB pieces of inform information in the order you can see them there. That should allow us to actually see request response pairs all the way through the sheet. So let's just click OK there just to make sure. And that should give us everything that we need in, in the correct order. Now what we're looking for is these request response pairs. So I'm going to just move across to the right here so that we can actually see some, some wording here. Uh, we, we're going to work on the direction the packet's going in, which so I'm going to have to move around in this sheet. Um, in fact, perhaps we'd be better hiding some of these values. Let's hide these. Right. So let's work out a formula for this particular request response pair. So our formula is going to check for two conditions. So I have to have an AND statement uh, encapsulated in my IF statement. And what I'm going to check for is that if the previous packet was going towards the server, so if the previous packet was going towards port 445, destination port 445, and the current packet is coming back from the server. So it's coming from 445. And also, just to double check, I'm going to make sure that my present first command sequence number is equal to the previous first command sequence number. So if all of those three conditions are true, then I'm interested in the time difference between my current packet and the previous packet. And if they're not true, I don't care. Here we see that we have uh, a very, uh, something that's happened very quickly. So we need to, let's copy this a bit further down the sheet to see if we can pick up some real values. This one here is quite interesting. 10 millisecond response. That's between this call here and this call here. I'm going to convert this into milliseconds because I prefer that to the current format. I copy the format of one of the server time cells and I paste it into a spare cell. I then enter a value of one millisecond. And now what I do is I come back here and I divide my time difference, whoops, let's do that again. I divide my time difference by this value over here. So that's converted that value. Now one thing I need to do is I need to anchor this cell so that as I copy the formula down the sheet, um, I'm still referencing this cell over here, U1. Don't worry too much about the fact this looks a bit strange, that value there looks strange. What we have to do is we have to convert this into numbers. So let's format the cell. And we change this back to a number format. That looks better. So now I can take that formula and copy it all the way to the bottom of the sheet. So if we go right down to the end of the sheet, you can see that we have server time value in all of these cells. Now the next thing is I want to resort the data back into um, the 
normal order in which the packets appeared on the wire. But I can't, if I do that right now, because my cells reference different rows, that will mess up the formulas. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce a new column. And then I'm going to take the existing column. I do control C for copy. I move to this cell. And I do alt E S to access the paste special dialog box. I choose values and then I paste those in. Now I can delete this column. And I still have all the values, but now they're values, not formulas. This, this effect here seems to be some sort of rounding issue. I've noticed this lots of times in Excel, but it doesn't really bother us too much. But uh, that's why that number looks slightly strange. OK, now I'm safe to sort my data back into frame, normal frame order. So let's uh, delete these, these sorts and add another, which is sort smallest to largest. Click OK. And now I'm back into normal frame order. So now I'm free to do all the things that I want to do. So typically the first thing I want to do is I want to know how long this whole thing took on the wire. Um, there is one thing here. I, I think I did say that I sent the ping rather late in the day. And obviously the last thing that's likely to happen on the wire as I'm loading this PDF is uh, a read because I'm going to be reading the data. So actually, bearing that in mind, and bearing in mind that I did send things rather late, I think what I'm going to do, especially as I've got this value here, which looks rather rather strange. What's that for? That's a read response of three seconds. 729. Ah, I don't have 729 here. What we can do, let's just look at 729. We add a filter in here and we choose to deselect everything, but just select command sequence 729. So these are some of the, these are additional things you can do with Excel. So I can filter just like that. Okay, so I have, I do have uh, a close request there and supposedly I have a read response. Um, but you remember that in the previous video, where we had uh, the response to a command bundled up with other responses, we simply copied the last packet of the response sequence and made a copy of it and then just set this value to 729. So in fact, this, this is wrong. So if you want to uh, tidy this up, you can simply paste over that and we'll just put in the word response like that. So uh, we do have a, that's a that's quite weird. So we 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 have this close a fair bit earlier, and then three seconds later the close completes. Um, if we remove our filter now by selecting all, um, and we look for seven two nine again, on value. So it's, it seems as though uh, oh we're closing. OK, so it's a it's a file called desktop any. I don't know if that should bother us or not. I don't think it should. Um, but it is taking a long time and I I, I wouldn't mind betting that the uh, close request um, actually failed or it could be that it was locked by another process. Anyway, the thing that's concerning me probably more than that is down to this point here where we've completed all of the reads which is that's the last read I believe in the whole sequence. So this aside and you could go off and investigate this but I think that could be a bit of a um, red herring. Let's get rid of all of those so that we just have these entries here and now I'm going to look at how long this took. So if I do equals that minus B2 that shows me how long it took on the wire and it seems as though it only took 30 seconds 
So my estimate of one minute may have been a bit over the top, and it also means that um, I did send the ping marker much later than um, I should have. That's because I didn't have the ping marker ready, just to be frank with you. I wasn't ready with the second ping, and so I had to frantically uh, create a command box, put the ping command in, and uh, send the ping. So given that we've got a 30 second elapsed time in this in this period here, let's now look at the total server time. And we can see that of that time, 10 seconds seems to be attributable to the the server. That seems a long period of time. It's a bit of a surprise because I'd assume that uh, most of the time would be associated with the with the client side which two-thirds of it is, of course, tw more than 20 seconds is, but I, I'm surprised that there's 10 seconds associated with the server. Perhaps what I need to do is look a bit further at what the server time is, just in case I've picked up values that are incorrect. So this is just a way of us double-checking the validity of what we've done. And I'm going to uh, use a scatter plot, which if you saw the previous video, you'll know that I always end up forming, formatting incorrectly. This is live video for you. What I should do is, of course, learn how to do it properly, then I wouldn't have to go through this, but this is where we are. So I'm going to uh, just delete this, remove that, add a new sequence, server name is going to form the series name, the server time rather, and then I want this range here, so I want all of these. And uh, I say OK. Obviously, you can see that the response times of nearly everything are very low, except for I have all of these outliers. So let's look at this really big one here. Plot point 942, and we have a value of 1,729 milliseconds, 1 1.7 seconds. So 942. So we go back to the sheet in this box up in the corner here. Put in A942 and bang, it takes us straight to the place where this response time is. This is delayed because we're sending all of this data prior to that point. So we have uh, a delayed response to an earlier read request at 72, which was request 728, which must be much further up the sheet. There's request 727, there's 728. Now, because we're overlapping lots of read requests here, uh, we're having to wait for them to complete before we can transmit the data from the server back to the PC. But what you do see here, and this is quite interesting, so this is distorting the figures somewhat, is that we've got lots of retransmissions and things. And uh, some of these delays are going to be associated with the fact that it took such a long time to send the previous sequence of packets due to retransmissions. Now what I could do is I could simply delete these values and then carry on through the chart and gradually eliminate the ones that I feel are not associated with the server. Um, but this just gives you an idea of the sort of analysis you can do. So I can keep looking at this and looking at these values. After all, there aren't that many there. I could I could investigate every single one of these values and find out the cause and uh, check to see if it's actually a server issue. So I hope that gives you an idea of how you can use Wireshark and Excel to investigate server performance problems. I'll see you soon.